Hey buddies, it's Puggy here coming at you another Borderland 3 video. Today I'm going to be showing you the black market location and showcasing what each and every single weapon can do. But before we get into it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You have no idea how much helps me out. And let's get into it. Legendary? Whoa! No way! So first things first, the location of this black market machine is going to be on Pandora all the way in Conrad's Hold. Now Conrad Hold only has one place you can fast travel to, which will be right over here. And the actual market location is actually going to be right here. So it's going to take you about like 20, 30 seconds walk. So I'm going to skip some of the walk and be right where the mine shaft is. So once you go into the mine shaft, it's pretty much just going to be directly in front of you to the left. Now some of the weapons on this machine is actually pretty decent, but most of them is considered not too too good. But I gotta say that one of the weapons is a very underrated weapon, especially for Moe's. If you saw that I accidentally had to cut it out and switch to another character because I unfortunately forgot that I looked at the black market machine in the last 30 minutes, <laughs> which is a big blunder by me. And I had to switch to this Iron Bear only Moe's that I was doing for a challenge run on my Twitch channel. If you guys are interested in any challenge runs, I do them every single Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. ET time, aka 3 p.m. PT time over on Twitch. So click on the top right and give me a follow. But let's actually look at the black market machine. There's going to be the Brainstormer, which is a pretty okay weapon, especially if you're Amara. It does a lot more da elemental damage than anything, so pretty good for Amara. We have the XZ41, which is arguably not really that great of a gun, and then the Duct, which is considered to be a really bad gun. But if you're on Moe's, it actually deals a lot, a lot of damage. Now let's head over to Sanctuary so we can actually see what these weapons can do in action. And now that we're finally back in Sanctuary, let's first talk about the first weapon, which is going to be the Duct. Now the Duct is considered a really bad gun but if you're Moe's since it deals splash damage it can actually deal lots and lots of damage any mag gun that does splash damage can deal lots and lots of damage with Moe's so the max damage of this gun is going to be 44k which I have right here now it doesn't spawn in any elements or splash annoyment, so unfortunately you can't optimize the splash damage as much as you could with other weapons. That also means that you don't have to farm it as hard <laughs> as other things, and since it doesn't have any elements, you don't have to farm it as hard either. It's just grab one that's max damage very, very easily, and then get to shooting. So what it does pretty much is that every single time you shoot with it, it's going to shoot a sticky bullet. Now I have the Infernal Wish on this character, which means that we're shooting two bullets at once, but each bullet's going to spawn a little kind of like a Torg sticky, and then that explodes after a while and deals pretty good damage. Now, when you hit a crit, you'll notice that the ricochet bullets will also occur and then Wow, we got three Minesweeper procs, that was crazy. Anyways, we had two additional bullets that spawned as well that ricocheted in nearby enemies. Now, since we have the Infernal Wish, that means there's four bullets that spawn, but they spawn right next to each other. So when you do this, every single time you create, it will head over to another enemy and deal lots of splash damage as well. But since there's only a single target, it will sometimes then hit the floor which right next to the actual target that you're looking at, which means that you can technically deal up to two times the amount of damage that you normally do based on a regular crit. Once you hit once, it could hit technically three times right next to each other, but the splash radius isn't too, too big. So you gotta get a little lucky like this to make sure each one will hit them afterwards. It's a pretty good gun. I showcased this gun on another black market video a few months back, and we were able to speed kill Grave Road really, really fast with this weapon. So we'll definitely do that again near the end of this, but let's head over to the next weapon, which is the XZ41. Now the XZ41 is a Hyperion weapon that has the max damage of 11K, but if you're Cryo, it's 12K. If you're Radiation, it's around 10K but it can spawn in every single element and kinetic now most of these will spawn in an element because they have a 10.3 percent chance of dropping there's five different elements while kinetic is going to be more rare with a 48.3 percent it can spawn in any element except for a splash it doesn't deal any splash damage so don't worry about that pretty much when you use it it's going to shoot little ricochet bullets to the left and right now these are really cool looking especially since they can ricochet off a wall that's nearby and then head up into the ceiling or head over to other areas but since the nature of this game most of the time the enemies don't group together to the left and right like a single fire line and most of the time because of that it probably won't serve you too too well it's definitely really cool to shoot i'll admit especially on modes with a bunch of amp shots and stuff like this but the actual damage of the gun isn't really too too great it deals okay damage i'll admit but besides that, not much damage really. I've once shot this weapon and then it ricocheted on the wall and then hit a random enemy that wasn't even close to the enemy once, but that was like extreme luck that I had to get to even do that. So it's 
definitely has some perk, I'd say, but it, you'd probably be better off using maybe a conference call or something like that. And now let's head over to the Brainstormer. Now the Brainstormer is actually a really cool gun, but unfortunately it doesn't deal too, too much damage. The max damage is going to be 5K, it can only spawn in shock, and it can have list projectiles of times 14 or times seven, but you're gonna be wanting to look for a times 14 because that's max damage right there. Every single time that you shoot the gun, you won't be able to see on the Jack clone, so we'll actually have to go into the field to see it. But when you shoot the gun, it actually does a shock chain lightning nearby enemies and it's actually does really good mobbing but for bossing since you can't really chain lightning to itself it doesn't really do much but one cool thing i'll show you right here is when you shoot it it shoots in a lightning bolt pattern so you see one two three four five six seven so it's a little lightning bolt which is really really cool little like gimmick thing right there i always find guns that do that very appeasing it does lots of pellets which is nice especially for minesweeper procs and stuff like that but let's actually head over to the field so you can see how much damage it can actually deal and to give it the most benefit of the doubt we will We'll use Revolter, which gives lots and lots of damage for the gun as well. And we'll be using Big Surplus and a bunch of other Big Mose modifiers to deal lots of damage with this gun. Now that we're at some enemies, I'm just going to enter Exit Iron Bear so we can get as many things as possible going for this weapon. So pretty much when you shoot the weapon, it does okay damage to shield targets, of course, since it's shock damage. But as you see right there, you'll see that Chain Lightning will head over to other enemies. Now it's pretty decent damage, as you see right here only on lesser foes. Once we see a badass and tankier foes like this, you'll notice that the damage quickly falls off, which is very unfortunate. The gun is definitely really, really good on mobbing, but if there's no enemies nearby, like right here, the damage doesn't really do too much damage, which is a bit upsetting. The chain lightning definitely does a fair bit amount of damage so if you get lots and lots of chain lightning on a guy it does decent damage now these chain lightnings can stack up to five times at once and since it's shooting lots of pellets this is very easy to accomplish unfortunately nothing of this weapon does splash damage even the chain lightning part which means that we won't be experiencing any splash damage at all with this gun doesn't spawn any splash annoyments but definitely is really fun to use because of the chain lightning effect is very nice and appeasing to look at i've always been a sucker for chain lightning effects in rpgs so, and it definitely goes for a very long while. It can chain lightning to like multiple enemies and then create a chain that goes pretty far. Right here, there's no enemies nearby, so it's, that's actually a bad example. Like right there, it went pretty far all the way up there. So it definitely has its perks, I'd say, but it's not too, too great. Let's head over to Grave Ward so I can show you how much damage the duck can do on Moe's, which is, <laughs> I'm really excited to show you. Before I actually kill Grave Ward here, let me show you the skill tree I'm working with just because some people like to ask after a speed kill. So I'm just pretty full on green. Just three points of big surplus, regular blue, and pretty decent red. But if you want a better explanation on that, that'll be for another day. But let's actually go into the Grave Ward fight and see how much damage we can do. So right now we're using Infernal Wish. I'm just going to enter exit Iron Bear. We're going to use some target softenings on the enemy. We're going to exit Iron Bear right there. Then we're going to apply Element Projector to ourselves to deal lots and lots of damage. And then we're just going to lace in the Grave Ward right here and he's down <laughs> very easily. It's very, very easy to deal lots of damage with this gun on Moe's because of how insane firing the Skag Den is. I want to give a big thanks and shout out to the members who make this all possible. Jace Noodles and Galaxy. Becoming a member will pretty much allow me to eventually become full-time, which means I'll be able to make more videos for you guys. So big thanks for those guys that have been supporting me now. If you guys are interested in becoming a member and supporting me further, as little as $5 a month, there'll be a link in the comments and description as well as the top right. But as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I hope you all have a great day. <laughs> Bye-bye. And the last shall be First to immerse in a pass out heat Facing him up with a moxie melted He woke up drowning in tchotchke hell More in a cave with a torch on a wall Than a window arrangement of porcelain dolls